How we see the world determines how we act. The Western philosopher Hobbes saw humans as engaged in a war with each other over resources, making our lives solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. This view of the individual, fearful, working alone, in competition with others, now dominates Western philosophical tradition. In indigenous philosophy, we are all related as individuals, as part of a kinship-based community, and as part of nature, in balance with the whole. In most Western thought, society is seen as an aggregate of self-interested individuals, connected by competition with each other over limited resources, creating fear, insecurity, hopelessness, a scarcity of spirit. Indigenous societies see prosperity in nature. Resources are abundant, shared. Collaboration fosters environmental stewardship and balance with nature. In the Western worldview, nature is feared, its value based on hierarchy. Everything on Earth ranked, mineral, plant, animal. With humans at the top, dominating everything below. In the indigenous worldview, humans are an equal part of a vibrant, interconnected whole. Two worldviews, two very different economic systems. The dominant Western market economy, like its worldview, driven by an assumption of scarce resources, intensive centralized production, individuals with insatiable appetites, accumulating. By this standard, the market economy works. 40% of the Earth's resources owned by just 1% of the population. The combined wealth of the three richest individuals in the world exceeds the GDP of the poorest 47 countries. The world contains only 497 multi-billionaires, while half of its population survives on less than two and a half dollars a day. The indigenous economy, like its worldview, interdependent, decentralized production, extensive use of resources, promoting responsible resource management, abundance, kinship, a belief in enoughness, encourages sharing and cooperation. In the Arctic, after a successful whale hunt, Inuit kinship and reciprocal obligations ensure everyone's needs are met, fairly and equitably. Prerequisites for sustainability, the health of the economy measured by the health of the whole. Health in the market economy, measured by gross domestic product, the more we produce, consume, the better the economy. Construction of buildings, manufacturing, transportation, all considered positive production, but so is production of weapons, cigarettes. While investments like healthcare, education, are considered costs, negative economic productivity and the impact on GDP of the physical and emotional costs of warfare, or the pollution that threatens one-third of the world's animal species? Irrelevant externalities outside the system. Not even making it onto the balance sheet. An unsustainable system where scarcity of resources is a self-fulfilling prophecy. There is an alternative. Indigenous peoples' territory spans 24% of the Earth's land surface, but is home to 80% of its total biodiversity. This is not a coincidence. In indigenous cultures, balance and harmony aren't romantic notions, but millennia-old design fundamentals. Nature essential for survival, production and protection together, Economic success sustainable, 
creating well-being for all. First Peoples funds indigenous models and traditional practices that offer insights to creating an alternative economy which promotes balance with nature and communal harmony.